Chris, after many years as one of the most creative and most influential men in car design, you have finally put up your own studio out here in Piemont in a very special environment. Tell us a bit about what this place is about and why it's so special. That's, I'm glad you didn't say, finally you're out to pasture, you know, like, <laughs> now you're gone. Um, this is a really special place. I'm glad you like it here. I'm glad you came with your car it's, it's, and your wife. It's beautiful to drive up here. Uh, this is in northern Italy. This is Piemont, um, which is about an hour south of Torino. We are in the wine hills of Dalanga, which is a very, very beautiful countryside. And uh, Catherine and I spent many years finding this so that after leaving BMW, which, you know, you know it's going to come sooner or later. And for designers, because we never really retire, you have to find something that's going to be that next phase of your life. We decided to do it in a spot that, that we felt would be wonderful to grow a whole team around in and do it in Italy. And it was a big, big choice, you know, move away from Germany to Italy. But we'd, we'd been here before when we were at Fiat, and we really liked it. So what we made was a studio here, Chris Bengel Associates. And it's not called Chris Bengel Design, because... That sounds more like, you know, I design, you just accept. Associates means everybody in the process, from the designers to the client and the engineers, marketing people, have a buy-in. So it's nice. And we actually created a car here, which is really cool. So it's, we've had clients from everything from spaceships to telephones to refrigerators to, to cars. And it's a great spot to do it in. Sounds like you broadened your scope. Picking projects that fascinate rather than just delivering an ordinary job. That's probably the dream of everybody, and I guess you could say we're living that. I mean, it's a place here where clients come and are inspired. We try to keep it that way with art, with things like a, uh, an invisible swimming pool, with, with uh, big walking arches. And in fact, some of this stuff inspires us to the point where we say, okay, let's do something with it. You know, like, like Arky, the big arch, we decided let's make a cartoon out of him, and that's what we're working on. Mm -hmm. Still, you left your mark on car design over decades, so there must be a special relationship. Was well, it clear from the outset of your career you would focus on cars? Well, that's a very good question. You know, I, I, at the very beginning of my time in university, I thought I would be a minister. I, I started to do the, the pre-studies to go into the ministry, and then I, I found car design and joined the other side. You know, it's like the dark side of the force. I always wanted to do with cars, but uh, I think... There was something about the concept of car design, not car design itself, but the idea of car design that appealed to me even more than just doing it, which is why I felt so, so privileged to be in management where, where these designers worked very hard and they did very great stuff. But I was able to talk with them about the idea of car design, and that, that's what I like a lot. Mm -hmm. Well, our, our subject today is uh, motoring heritage. Motorization has changed the way of living in the past century well, yeah. like nothing else. Like nothing else. And it is fever to preserve this heritage and to make sure those cars can be used on the roads of tomorrow as well. How do you think? Why is it important to keep this heritage, to be aware of the tremendous development of automotive design and technology over more than 100 years? I, you're absolutely right when you say this. Very few phenomena have impacted human life as much as the automobile has. I mean, really seriously changed our way of living and our way of spatial organization from questions about what is a house relative to its garden and its garage to how does a city work. I mean, it is still evolving. And uh, the automobile has this tremendous, tremendous impact on that, as well as being an incubator for maybe more technical advancements than almost any other, any other culture. Um, the automobile industry itself is probably the biggest research conglomerate in the world and, uh, and still necessary to drive huge institutions of education and engineering development as well as design. But to me, the, the most important thing about this phenomenon and why it should be always present in our minds is not just its relationship to the past that we like to admire and, and celebrate, but because of its relevance to the future. And I, I, and the more I lived with cars over 
decades of being in Cartesian, it seemed like every five years, my interest went back another 10 years. And it went back from the 70s to be interested in cars in the 60s and then back to the 50s and then suddenly pre-war cars and then the thir and then really into cars of 1910 and the buggies that were just around, yeah, until finally I'm hunting down, you know, horse-drawn carriages from 1780 that were made out of paper that had surface development that when I showed it to my car design students, I go, let's see you do that, you know. This is incredible amount of of not only technical development, but let's say cultural and, and, and visual emotional development that was coming through this product. And, and, and ingenuity. And, and ingenuity, and this is what I want to get to. This, the older the cars are, the more intuitive they are, the more you're seeing actual raw human, human understanding of our own nature being presented in a technical form. It's not being overly marketed and you're not having other types of rules and regulations conforming it. It's just like, this is how human beings want to be. And as we go forward, if we don't keep that in our minds and go back and look at that and, and reference that, we will begin to forget about who we're doing this for, which is real people. So to me, it's, it's fabulous. Uh, I just had the opportunity to take my, my car designers to a car museum in California, the Peterson, which is very famous. And we're doing an electric car for the future now. We sat in an electric car from 1910 and realized, you know, we're trying to do the same thing. They did it better, maybe. I don't know. But we certainly had a lot to learn from. Great. Yeah. Well, it, it sounds like you like, uh, like you join us in our quest <laughs> to I, keep this motoring heritage as an important part of, uh, of our cultural heritage and learn from it for the future. Definitely. And, and there's another thing I want to say about that. The older cars represent human qualities of craftsmanship, of build, of construction, of, of physicality done by craftsmen, by, by, by not only the designers, engineers, but let's say the people actually built these cars. And if we don't have reminders of those in front of us every day, we begin to think that our world is made of only a machine culture for machines. You know, these, these, these things we carry around with us, these little perfect pieces of glass slabs, have no emotional content in the physicality like one of these cars do. And if people don't see it, if young people don't see it, they forget what's possible to be done. And that's their future. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much, Chris. Thanks, Mario. Thanks. It was really great. I wish you all the best with this, and, and I give it all my support as well. Great. Fantastic. Thank you.